Goody will drive. Left hand and flush over the top of Kipnick and the foul. 15 to shoot. Pull back, step back three. Bottom! Trey Woodbury! Humphrey, Humphrey to the goal to win it for the Mavericks. It's short. Tip back in. Weaver got it. Yes! Jones for the tie. Oh, oh he's fouled! And one! Are you kidding me? It's knocked away. Still loose. Doherty the heave. Oh, oh my god! Oh, it's good! There's no possible deflections for Southern Utah. Oh, no. Harrison with another three. Southern Utah is going to do something they've never done before. Go to the NCAA tournament. What's up, everybody? Another episode of the Straight Out of Whack podcast. It's a good day. It's been on this Whack Wednesday. We were able to release the matchups for the men's men's side of the Whack Conference USA Alliance. You can see that on WhackHoopsDigest.com. There's some juicy matchups there. I'm still waiting to hear back from two schools on their matchups. Uh, I have seven of the nine matchup, you know, teams uh, who they who they be playing on the women's side. So, just waiting on two schools. Once we get that, we'll get the women's uh, CUSA WAC Alliance matchups out. But today we're talking with I, I want to say one of the biggest Utah Tech fans out there. If you don't follow him, you need to follow him on Twitter. On Instagram, I think he's got a couple Instagram accounts. Now, I'll let him tell you that when he comes on. Dallas Clifford, I, I want to I want to call you like Mr. Trailblazer because like you are, I don't know, you you led the Stampede, what, the last two years? Is that right? That's that's right, man. I was a Stampede president for two years and now I'm graduated, dude. I, I've, I've lost some identity with it, you know? <laughs> it, it, seriously, though, follow him on Twitter. I think you got your Twitter handle right there at Dal Cliff. Is that your Instagram, or do you have a, another Instagram account too? Um, yeah, so that if personal Instagram, that's me right there. Um, but we're we're gonna get into it a little bit. We we have some we're working on some stuff. I've had a lot of time this summer being graduated. Got some projects been able to work on. So we got we got some other stuff we're working on. I like it. I like it. And uh, Dallas is big into the weightlifting right now. I'm not gonna lie. I I'm pretty impressed with what I see on Instagram. I. Used to be there. I'm 41 now, so I'm a little bit more lazy in that regard. <laughs> but uh, how's the summer been treating you? How's it feel to be a grad? Uh, it's it's good, man. I uh, the the job hunt is is not fun. I guess is the best way to say that. It's it's rough, but you know, it's given me not. I, I don't. It's been relaxing. I think is the number one thing. I've been able to chill out the last two years being the Stampede president. I didn't have like summers to chill out. I was working a ton. We were getting stuff ready. So just kind of getting to relax this summer, having a good time. My wife and I have been going on vacation. I get to hang out with my dog. And, you know, it's a good time. It's fun. Nice. Nice. So what Dallas was talking about just a few minutes ago, they, they've started a new, I want to say a fan site, fan social medias for Trailblazers fans called Blazer Nation Network. If you If you don't, if you're not following it, go to at Blazer Nation Net on Twitter. I believe that's the same handle on Instagram as well. Is that right? Yeah, across the board. Across okay. the board. So talk to me about this Blazer Nation Network. I think it's a fabulous idea. I, I did one for Utah Valley a mm -hmm. few years back with one team all green. Then I kind of switched over to this Wack Hoops Digest. But, I mean, talk to us about what – you want to do with this blazer nation network I, I like i said i think it's fabulous i think every school needs to have something like this set up for all their teams where fans run it where we get info where we get to see things on campuses or at games and stuff like i i think this is a fabulous idea so so talk to us a little bit about that yeah man so it's 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 a passion project for me uh, I, I said earlier with not being the stampede president anymore i kind of kind of lost a little identity so had to find a way to kind of stay, stay the biggest fan, stay Mr. Trailblazer, if you will. Um, and so really right now it's super infant stages, um, right? We're just social media, but it, it's essentially a community of Trailblazer fans. Um, it, you see all these, all these schools, all these big time, um, uh, like even professional teams, they have these communities across social media that um, are just fan networks run by the fans. Um, and so Blazer Nation Network is just that. It's a network of, of Trailblazer fans. And 
eventually, you know, we, I got, I have some goals looking forward. Hopefully we're going to drop a blog with it, a weekly blog. Maybe I, for weekly is probably the best thing to do. Um, we're going to drop a pod with it, hopefully. Um, and just, just keep fans really in the loop and kind of give a, a different perspective outside of like our athletic department. Cause they have to, they got a bunch of compliance stuff and stuff they have to deal with. But on the fan side, we, we kind of had, I don't want to say free reign. There's a lot of rules. There's rules with it, obviously, but kind of our own perspective of like, man, we got these players, we got these teams, this is what's happening. This is what's happening on campus. So just kind of opening, opening that up for trailblazer fans to, to be fans. That's what it is. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I think that's a great thing because I mean, let's, let's face it. Local newspaper writes about Utah tech a little bit, mm-hmm. but you know, the newspapers up north don't really write about Utah Tech unless they do something big, right? Exactly. Um, and then you got the Las Vegas market, which is just too far away. So mm-hmm. it's not like there's a lot out there that's talking about Utah Tech per se if they're not winning a lot. Um, I know that because I'm a Utah Valley guy and they don't exactly. talk a lot about Utah Valley when they're not winning. So I think it's a fabulous idea. I think, you know, we're going to have to see – you need to get a, a pod or somebody running socials, maybe yourself, that just gives us, you know, the outlook of campus down there. I know it's growing. I know St. George is getting bigger by the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just think that we need to get that inside look at, at Utah Tech Athletics, and I know you have that in um, with what you're doing. So I, I, I applaud you guys for starting this. I think that's awesome. I love it. Um, follow it at Blazer Nation Net. Yep. On all socials. Uh, yeah, fabulous, fabulous. And uh, let's let's talk about this Utah Tech team. They lose four starters on the men's side: Cam Gooden, Isaiah Pope, Frank Stain, Jacob Nichols, all gone. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a lot to lose. I'm not gonna lie. Like that was basically the majority of that squad that got into the WAC tournament mm-hmm. uh, and then won a game in the WAC tournament for the first time, Division One, you know, postseason play. I believe it was a one point loss in the WAC semifinals to Southern Utah, which I oh. think that, like here's the crazy thing. You want to talk about heartbreak. You and I had heartbreak on back to back nights. Oh like, dude. As, as fans, right? Completely. I, I just I don't know. What was your thoughts as you see these guys work their way into the WAC tournament? They win a game, then they go toe to toe with Southern Utah and should probably could have won that game late. I mean where John Judkins has taken this team from being a division two school to division one. And just maybe they didn't have as many wins as they wanted last year, but still they were competitive most of the time. Like, what oh, do you yeah. like? What do you see? You, you, you know, John Judkins, like he's a winner, so he's going to win. Well, that's, that's exactly right. I mean, Juddy, Juddy's going to win. doesn't matter what it is. Um, you know, we, we knew like going into the off season, Cam wasn't going to be back. We knew Jacob wasn't going to be back. It was going to be huge blows. Um, and with like the new transfer portal, I think we all kind of with how good Pope was last year and, and kind of where like we, we can't make a tournament this year. So with, with that, like I, I almost expected Frank Stain to move on too. Um, so it's, it's some of the, it's one of those things that like, it sucks. You don't, you, you hate watching your guys leave, you know, but also like Isaiah Pope's going to play at Fresno state. It's a great thing. Frank's going to play at SFA. I don't like that it's in conference, but as far as like a fit for his game, there, there's not many other teams in the country that fit his game that well. So, so like I said, it sucks. Like we love our guys. We, the cool part about being at like Utah tech and in St. George is you have a really personal relationship with all the players. doesn't matter if you're me who worked really closely with them, or if you're just a normal student, like Frank Stain was a celebrity on campus and not like big celebrity. You couldn't go talk to. I'm talking to a guy that like he knew everybody knew him and like you could talk to him whenever you wanted to. Um, so it sucks to see that, but, um, and you know, like you would talk about that heartbreak. I, I still think about that game. I, I was literally just talking about it this morning with somebody. Um, so, so a little sad, still, still a little bitter about that one, but um, Juddy and his staff done a good job this summer, man. we, we are replenished. We are, I, I tweeted out the other day. I said, I'm, I can't express how excited I am for sports this year at Utah tech. We're going to be good, dude. Um, and I, I think we're going to get overlooked a lot because of what we lost, especially on like the men's side, the guys we brought in are dogs, man. 
Well, and they so they they went with some youth. They got some true freshmen that are going to be there. Maybe one of maybe a couple of them may redshirt. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Eric Demings from Duncanville High School in DeSoto, Texas. Probably one of the highest recruits ever to Utah Tech outside oh, yeah. of the JUCO years when they had like a Marcus Banks and Jaime Lareda back way back when. Um, but during this D2, D, D1 era, I think he might be one of the highest rated recruits to come there. Uh, they got some JUCO guys. They got size. That's the big thing to me is outside of maybe Tanner Christensen, and, and you had Trey Edmonds last year, but he was still developing. They haven't had like depth in the in in the in the paint, and mm -hmm. I feel like Juddy went out and said, "You know what? We got to get bigger. We got to get more depth in the paint." And I think I feel like that's what he did. I mean, he's brought in a six ten, six eleven junior from Fullerton College, Sammy Hallen, mm -hmm. six nine transfer Trey Hall from Evansville. Um, I'm just looking at the roster, and it's just like. Tennessee Rainwater is 6'6", going to play the guard four position. Uh, Tanner Christian 6'10". Jalen Searles, Juco transfer, 6'8". I mean, he's got some size and some length. So what's, what do you see with this squad? Um, the, the, the cool part is, like, he got these guys that are really big but super athletic. Yep. We, we have some athletes now man Jalen Jalen Searles I'm actually super excited about him I think he's he's gonna be a hooper for us here um he he averaged double digits last year for um I, I think it's southeastern college in Iowa I think is what it was southeast or southwest I don't I don't remember off the top of my head but that team played two games in the NJCAA division one national tournament and he scored he averaged 14 and a half in the tournament um so you have guys like that you have Sammy Hallen whose team won I believe it was California State tournament um, and he would, he averaged eight a game for a state championship team and the only state that has their own Juco league. Um, and they played big time teams. Um, another guy, our guard play is going to be really good. We have um, David Elliott who came in from garden city. who's a point guard. He garden city. If you know anything about the Jayhawk league and junior college basketball, unreal. Yep. He, he averaged double digits at, at garden city, Eric Demings. Like you said, I, Eric Demings is going to be so good. Uh, he, I mean, his his teammate from high school is going to be the number one draft prospect next year, and he was the point guard for the number two team high school team in the country. You're not a bum player if you you play for that team. <laughs> yeah, Brock Staley, one of the assistants for John Judkins, um, and you know Jake Schrader both kind of mentioned Eric Demings as a guy mm -hmm. to keep an eye on this year. So um, I think you know Jud J John Judkins got one of the best names uh one of his players has one of the best names in the league in tennessee rainwater dude coolest coolest name in all college basketball absolutely <laughs> absolutely so with that being said we we just put out the the conference usa WAC alliance matchups uh utah tech i mean they get i i put it in my write-up that they're games that are winnable that they should be able to compete in um, against at Jacksonville State on November 11th versus Florida International on December 30th, you know, where they get it right before they get back into whack play. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But, I mean, these are two winnable games. I, I don't know much about either school, so I'll have to go back and look at it when we get to the preview week for the, for the Trailblazers. But, I mean, how nice is it when you look at it that, oh, we're not playing the non-D1, we're not doing this, we're playing two Division One opponents that, with the fact that they're keeping the, the seating system in place again, and we know that only eight teams make it to whack Vegas this year, how nice is that to say, okay, well, we have two chances, two more chances maybe we did last year to get points? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. Like, we, those non D1 games are super fun, especially when they're at home. Cause like you get to see your guys kind of perform at like this different level. But knowing, like, knowing what we know, like you just said, we, we only get eight teams in the tournament this year and we're doing the seating system, the having those type of games are huge. I, I'm like you. I, I haven't really looked into much Jacksonville State or FIU. Um, I know FIU wasn't didn't have a super high net ranking last year, which makes me feel good. Um, and FIU was close – or uh, sorry, Jacksonville State was close-ish to what like where we were. Um, but it, it all changes, obviously, with transfer portal, with new things happening in the offseason. Um, but it's, it's exciting, man. It's exciting to see these teams like – 
I know who FIU is. I know who Jacksonville State is. Students here, the community here, they know those schools. We're not playing teams that we don't know or we've never heard of before. So it's fun. It's fun to have teams like that on the, the schedule. Absolutely. Let's talk about the WAC schedule that came out today. Uh, kind of a weird setup this year. I mean, I've already known about it for a week or two, mm-hmm. but there's games in November, like November for some, yeah. for Utah Tech, they don't start till December 2nd, but even then that's a month earlier than what we're normally used to. And the kicker is they get Utah Valley to open up whack play. At Ber- I think you called it the heater today when you tweeted it you out. Like that? I do like that. So, <laughs> I mean, is that a week? I'm, I'm trying to figure out when finals would be. Would finals be a week later? So there still be students on campus for that ball game? Um, I want to say the last. You want to have your students on campus for? Yeah, you got to have them there. Um, I it should be the week before um, finals. If I, I haven't looked at the um, schedule, but we do. They, I know they start a little bit later, so it should be the week before finals. So hopefully. Hopefully we have like they get students out to it. I, I the cool part is the next guy. It's a stampede. He lives with my wife and I here, so like we get to talk about things all the time and strategize stuff. Um, but I don't, they should be able to get students out to it. It's a it's a rivalry game. So like we we live in the state of Utah. If there's a rivalry game, dude, everybody in the state of Utah is up for it. Doesn't matter. We could other teams maybe not so much, but if it's a rivalry game, state of Utah, man, we love that thing. Well, and here's the thing. Utah Valley got the best of Utah mm-hmm. Tech twice last year, 71-60 in Orem, um, and then 76-69 in St. George on February 2nd. But these was games that, are a lot a more competitive game, than, than what people might think. Like two years ago, it was an overtime win at Burns Arena for Utah Tech. Um, I believe – in the twenty, the first year that Utah Tech was in the WAC, when they did the back-to-backs, Utah Tech split with UVU mm-hmm. up here in Orem. Um, I I remember that because I'm the I was on the broadcast call with Brandon Crow for that. So uh, these games are a lot more competitive than people think, and and with a whole new roster at Utah Valley after that twenty-eight win season, like there this and it, and it being so early too, where teams are still trying to figure out their rotations or whatnot or their roles this will be an intriguing game because i mean you're not prepared to start conference play that early i feel like no yeah and i think we're both gonna like both uvu and utah tech are gonna run into that we're we're these brand new teams that are still trying to figure each other out so could be a sloppy game but like you said it's always competitive all right any game that i've watched even i i went up to the game at utah valley not this last year the year before and like we weren't even Utah Tech wasn't playing their best basketball at all, and I think it ended up being like a seven point game or something. Always close, always good. When you just said that last game here was a seven point game, I actually thought it was way worse than that. Um, so like it just shows you how how like how competitive it is. That that game two years ago when we hosted UVU in the overtime game might be the best live sporting event I've ever been to. That was unreal. It the atmosphere in there like the roof of the burns almost blew off when cam Gooden got the and one on fardos so it was unreal i still question what fardos was doing on that play like get out of the Dude. way Just to, you don't need to touch him let him go for the layup take the you know take the ball out of bounds go to the free throw line what like i still I, I still to this day wonder what fardos was thinking there but you know it worked out cam hit the end one and you know utah tech went on the win ball game so that's just a head scratcher. It's like Utah Valley against Southern Utah in the WAC semifinals. Like, mm-hmm. what were you doing? Like, you oh. foul him way before or as soon as he gets the ball, not when he's shooting. Like, uh, don't take me back. We both have this <laughs> for the 2023 <laughs> WAC tournament. So, uh, yeah. So, and then, you know, their second WAC game, we'll just talk about this real quick. They go to Cal Baptist where we know how crazy those games have been mm-hmm. uh, last year. Utah Tech, not this past, not 2023, 2022. Yep. Utah Tech scored like 12 points. 12, they outscored CBU 12 to nothing over the final minute and a half mm-hmm. to win in Riverside. Um, I just like these games are fun between these two former D2 opponents. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's good basketball. Oh, it's, it's such good basketball. That, like, that was another game that I was watching at home, just losing my mind when, uh, 
we scored those 12 points against CBU. It was unreal. Um, but yeah, that's I, the CBU rivalry goes back to like both of them obviously go back before I was at Utah Tech, but like right before I came to Utah Tech, I guess the CBU uh, then Dixie State rivalry was actually really big. Like they, I had, I came here and people were like, oh man, last year we played CBU and it was insane. And I was like, oh man, that's cool. I don't even know who that is. Like I'd heard of them for baseball, but I was like that's awesome. But coming back into this now, like that, that it's it's always competitive when we play both of those teams. I CBU, I think wants their rivalry to be GCU. I think we have we could have a really good rivalry with them. To be honest with you, um, it I will see they're they're going to rebuild too. They they lost a lot of talent this year. Yep. It's going to be again early season trying to figure themselves out, and we probably get some sloppy basketball, but maybe hopefully some really competitive basketball. <laughs> That's the problem with playing conference games so early. You just don't – you just don't – I don't know. They had to do it because they're trying to get 20 conference games in this year because exactly. obviously there's 11 teams, so you can play everybody twice. So I had to figure that out. I just – I don't know that I'm going to like having conference games so early and then you have almost a whole month before you play your next conference game. That's going to be kind of – I'm interested to see how teams adjust to that. So – uh, it, it just makes, like I said, Utah Tech, U, Utah Valley on December 2nd. I think CBU plays Southern Utah on the women's side to open up WAC play. That's, yeah. you know, the WAC championship game from 2023. Um, so it's just, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that all works out this year. Um, and we'll see what John Judkins, you know, I feel like there's more, a little bit more depth this year oh, for the Trailblazers yeah, than, there, than there was last year. Um, and we'll see how that plays out. And, you know, Utah Tech may be hosting the WAC freshman of the year. Eric Demings, you know, will probably be right there in the midst for it because there's not a lot of freshmen in this conference. And, and, and if I'm thinking right, Utah Valley and Utah Tech probably have two of the top freshmen in the league with um, Eric Demings and Osiris Grady from yep. Utah Valley. So uh, that'll be interesting to watch. I want to just talk about the women's side real quick before I let you go. Absolutely. I mean, Brianna Gillen back, Emily Isaacson back, Maggie McCord back. They're hoping that the Warren sisters are back and ready to go um, come season time. J.D. Gustin adds a few more pieces, but, I mean, he – that team – and people better not sleep on them throughout, uh, throughout the season because I think this Utah Tech women's basketball team is going to be very, very good. Oh, Kyle, I, I, we've been talking about it because we signed the th four freshmen last year before I think conference play even happened. We've been talking about it here since then. We are going to be very good. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of experience on the team. We only lost three players. We lost uh, Avery Papa, um, Talia Stimson, and Brooke Vance. Um, and the really big contributors for us last year what they brought in just fills the holes perfectly. I, if, if not more. Um, and then, like you said, Bree, Bree's going to do what she does. She's, I completely agreed with her being in the conversation for possible player of the year this year. Um, I tweeted out the other day. I think one of our four freshmen will probably win uh, freshman of the year. I, I genuinely believe that they are all four extremely good players. Um, they're they're going to be so good that, that, group of four players right there. If we can, because of transfer portal, you have to say it, if we can keep them here, they're going, they're going to do some great things at Utah tech. Yeah. I, I 100% agree with you. I, I, if I'm being honest with you, it's all about those Warren sisters. If they get mm -hmm. healthy and if they stay healthy, this team could win the whack easily because of what, of the experience that JD Gustin has. I, I want to look at one thing real quick to just to point out that, that statement that I just made. Mm -hmm. Okay, Macy Warren played in eight games last year. She was averaging 18.9 points per game yep. and 5.4 rebounds. She was shooting 50 almost 51% from the field. I mean, she had 25 points against Utah State, 21 against Kansas City, 15 against Kansas State, mm -hmm. 29 against Air Force, before injuring her knee. Yep. I just, you know, and her sister didn't play much either because she was dealing with an ACL injury. So 
Like, if those two can be healthy and stay healthy, um, J.D. Gustin's crew, I, I think, is one of the favorites. Like, they have to be, along with, uh, uh, you know, I've mentioned it, UTA mm-hmm. is right there with Star Jacobs coming back, and then they added Avery Brittingham and Talia Clark from Seattle. Yep. Uh, GCU's there with all that they've added with Trinity San Antonio um, and Shea Fano going to GCU this year. Southern Utah still there. I, I we'll see what the impact of losing Sharita Daughtry and is uh, Lizzie Williamson yep. does for the defending champs. And CBU is always in the mix too. So uh, Utah Tech is going to be right there. It's unfortunate they can't go to the NCAA tournament because they're in the final year of the transition phase. Uh, but I think winning a game in the WAC tournament for both teams last year was a stepping stone, and now it's time to to take the next step for the Trailblazers. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you, you hit it on the head with Macy and Maddie. Um, I, from what I've heard, the rehab is going really well, that they're, they're going to be ready to go. Um, just hope they don't rush it back too fast. Yeah. Um, that's, I, I think, unfortunately, I think that's what happened with Maddie last year. She got really excited to come back and just went just a little too quick with it. Um, that's, I don't know that for sure. I, I'm not a doctor. I couldn't tell you, but that's, that's my, that's the outside like opinion of that. But if they can come back, I, we have basically two starting lineups. Um, I I would hate to be in JD's shoes, to be honest with you, having to try to find who's going to start a game for me. Um, I mean, it, somebody that doesn't get mentioned uh, as much as Amber Karchner, which I think she, like we saw in Vegas, she she became kind of the the silent leader for that team. Um, when Because I, I think Bree was kind of dealing with an injury and it was kind of everybody was looking at Amber. Um, and she – silently took that took that role on i think and kind of became that that leader um that jd i think that we were all expecting coming from byu and who she was like before like she's a really good player um i i'm really excited for amber this year um i think she's gonna be awesome and i this team's gonna be so good you can't talk about like not talk about them being in the mix for a conference championship yeah and i want to point out something too that people may not think about i don't know how much time amber karchner would have gotten if the Warren sisters don't get hurt. Mm-hmm. And I say that because I don't know that JD wanted to rush her into playing 25, 30 minutes a game, but it could have been a huge blessing in disguise that they got hurt to get Amber Carson all the minutes and the experience that she got in year one. Because I believe she redshirted at BYU. She didn't even play a yeah. game. So that it, it, it's amazing how that stuff plays out, right? So – yeah, I, I like Utah Tech women. I think Utah Tech men will be deeper this year. I will see how that plays out. They got a challenging uh, non-conference slate, and then they open up whack play on December 2nd at home against Utah Valley. So, uh, Dallas, I appreciate the time, man. It, it's always a pleasure. Uh, keep pumping iron, and, and, you know, we'll see how that – everybody, remember, go fly, follow that Blazer Nation network at Blazer Nation Net uh, to get all the good stuff that Dallas and his crew – put together and uh, enjoy the rest of your summer d hey man i'll try i appreciate you let's let's get on let's do this again uh let's go and go blazers man always i love it thanks for listening to the straight out of whack podcast you can find us on apple podcasts spotify and other podcasting platforms be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode Remember to follow us on Twitter at Wack Hoops Digest and Facebook under Wack Hoops Digest for all your Wack Hoops news and information.